Good morning, everyone. We begin this morning's meeting of the Board of County Commissioners General Session for October 3rd, 2017 with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Brown. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with justice for all. Um, if we could also begin this morning's meeting with uh, a moment of silence for uh, all those that were victims in um, Las Vegas over the weekend. Thank you. While we're still obviously waiting for uh, more information and investigation, um, I think it appears uh, evident that um, we'll have to, uh, you know, as, as the Board of Commissioners, you know, we, gun violence is, is something that um, this country's uh, growing all too familiar with, and, and um, uh, but, but uh, mental health. Um, uh, is a an issue that we uh, have um, had to deal with on a regular basis. It's something that we uh, believe we need to invest more time and, and more money and more energy into. Um, I think that I think it gets, it's evident that this is going to be a case that will bear out uh, um, uh, that there's uh, uh, evidence or there, there'll be evidence that this this, this is a case of. Uh, mental health, uh, where there's mental health issues in this in this instance, and um, um, most likely, and uh, you know this is this is a sad occurrence and a tragedy. Uh, these victims are from all over the country, uh, touching a lot of lives, um, and obviously uh, there's going to be a hot debate on on uh, uh, guns and gun safety and. Uh, and I, my guess is is that won't um, that there won't be much courage in uh, the United States Congress uh, when it comes to this issue uh, because the NRA is a much too strong lobby and uh, so and if you haven't seen Jimmy Kimmel from last night you should check him out because he was pretty cur cur courageous if you ask me anyway get off my soapbox uh, so anyway can we get an emotion for an approval of the minutes of. We do uh, not minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. I look. I'm looking at this thing, and we. Have, I should be looking at the official agenda as opposed to the unofficial agenda. Sorry about that, Antoine. We have no minutes. Uh, Court of Common Pleas. Resolution number 681-17. Resolution authorizing a contract addendum yeah. with the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction for the Justice and Reinvestment Program, Probation Improvement and Incentive Grant Program, in amount of one hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars. Good morning, Commissioners. Kimberly Canada, Director of Finance for the Common Police Court, and with me is Lori Franciscan, Chief Probation Officer. This addendum authorizes the court to receive 60 additional days of funding for the probation incentive uh, improvement grant provided by the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction. The state is in the process of revising the performance standards associated with this grant. Once completed, the state will release the funding for the remainder of the grant cycle. Pending any questions, we request your approval. I'll move for approval of 681.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 681-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. The engineer. Um, we will now have a public hearing. Uh, and if the clerk could please read uh, the public hearing. Public hearing regarding final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening of Morse Road at Katz Miller Road, Plain Township, Franklin County, Ohio. All right, and I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on the public hearing? All right, seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and have the clerk read the resolution into the record. Resolution number 683-17. Final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening of Morse Road at Katz Miller Road, Plain Township, Franklin County, Ohio. 
Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Cornell Robertson, Franklin County Engineer. With me today is Carla Marable. Commissioners, this capital improvement project is in the northeast part of the county <coughs> in Plain Township. It is a cooperative project including Franklin County, New Albany, and Ohio Department of Transportation. This resolution will allow us to move forward with appraisals and right-of-way acquisition. I'll move approval of 683-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 683-17 has been adopted. All right. Public hearing for the second. Uh, we uh, now need to have a public hearing. I'd like to open a public hearing for uh, the second. Um, uh, resolution, could you please read it into the record, Antoine? Public hearing regarding final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening a Smothers Road at Shot Road, Red, Red Bank Road, Franklin County, Ohio. All right, so we'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone in the room that would like to uh, speak on this public hearing? Being none, i will close the public hearing. Um, Resolution number 684-17, final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening a Smothers Road at Shot Road, Red Bank Road, Franklin County, Ohio. Commissioners, this is a very similar resolution. It's also for a project in the northeast part of the county. We have designed around about this intersection, Smothers, Shot, and Red Bank. This resolution will allow us to move forward, hire appraisers, and begin the right-of-way acquisition. It's a growing area. Yes. Oof. Move approval of 684-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 684-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 685-17, resolution proposing to cooperate with the Director of Transportation to improve various intersections throughout the county, Franklin County, Ohio. Commissioners, this resolution covers three capital improvement projects, one mentioned previously at Morris and Kitzmiller, another at the intersection of Reynoldsburg, New Albany Road, and Clark State Road, that's in Jefferson Township, also the northeast part of the county, and the third is in the southwest part of the county on the line between Prairie Township and Pleasant Township at the intersection of Norton Road and Johnson Road. All three projects are cooperative with Ohio Department of Transportation and will utilize safety funding for all three. Move approval of 685-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 685-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 686-17, Resource International Incorporated Consulting Engineers appointed to assist <coughs> the Franklin County engineer in preparing right of way and construction plans for the Boar Road 1.66 over Plum Run Project, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $157,468. Commissioners, this resolution seeks authorization to enter into an agreement with Resource International Incorporated to prepare right of way and construction plans for the uh, improvement of Boar Road 1.66 over Plum Run. The project is located in the southwest portion of the county in Jackson Township. The consultant was selected using the qualifications-based selection process and uh, Resource International is an FBE. I'll move for approval of 686-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 686-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 687-17, establishing altering and widening of Ormond Avenue from Walford Street to Cleveland Avenue, Clinton Township, Franklin, Franklin County, Ohio, declared necessary. This resolution seeks to declare necessary the Ormond Avenue Improvement Project. The project is located in Clinton Township, and the project, the proposed project, will improve uh, existing drainage uh, issues along Ormond Avenue. Move for approval of 687-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 687-17 has been adopted. Can I, sorry, can I ask, um, generally these are pretty easy to follow uh, when you know where the where the township is. Clinton is one of those townships that's kind of... <coughs> Everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of all over. It's kind of in Grandview. It's kind of in Mif or over in the... Um, uh, Cleveland Avenue area. What what part of uh, Clinton Township is this in? This is um, 
Because I don't recognize the street. Anymore. Yeah, this is off of Cleveland Avenue, just north of Linden. So it's just north gotcha. of Cook. So we're in the Linden area. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. the most fragmented. I guess I could have looked at the have, map, but it? it's very <laughs> fragmented. Yeah. yeah. Mifflin's a little fragmented, but, but Clinton like Township Clinton. is really fragmented. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Resolution number 688-17, resolution approving street storm and water improvement plans for Weldon Phase 1 and 2, Jefferson Township, Franklin County, Ohio. This resolution seeks approval of the construction plans for the Weldon Phase 1 and Phase 2 subdivision. This subdivision is located in Jefferson Township uh, in the northeast portion of the county. Approval of these plans will allow the developer, MI Homes, to move forward with the construction of the streets, storm sewers, and water lines. Move approval of 68817. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Uh, Com yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 688-17 has been adopted. Thank you very Thank much. You. Hey, uh, Commissioner O'Grady, may I take a personal point of privilege for a quick second? Sure. Okay. I just want to uh, recognize I haven't had a chance to report out since uh, I had my visit from inspection. my bridge inspections. And and so I want to I take a minute pictures. to yeah. Uh, I know th this is old hat to uh, these two commissioners, but to me it was very exciting. Uh, but even beyond uh, being out there with the spiders and the snakes and all the things, <laughs> this and the bridges um, was the opportunity to really meet all of the hardworking engineering staff and learn about what they do, how they do it. And it's one of those jobs you come to respect in that you don't really see what they do all the time, but they're keeping you safe. And when you get under these bridges and you hear their presentation of uh, where we need to make improvements on them bridges, what over time can be an issue, and how the whole uh, dynamics of the engineering of a bridge work, um, you really come to respect that this happens every day and they're just keeping millions of people safe. And, and so I wanted to just share that it was a, a great experience. Uh, we went to several bridges. and. Um, I learned what a culvert was. I bet you don't know what that is, <laughs> but I learned about it. Uh, and I learned about uh, how, you know, obviously if it's a bridge, it's over something. So sometimes they're in water, and how that, uh, how the erosion can impact the, the lifespan of a bridge, and and how the weather plays a big part of it. And uh, again, I just want to say publicly, um, you know, what a tremendous staff you have, and and the work that you all are doing, and, and just acknowledge uh, that you've got some fine people looking out for the citizens of Franklin County. So thank you so much. Thank you. We were thrilled to have you out there. We are very passionate about infrastructure, as weird as that might sound, but uh, our, our staff is... It's yes. very important. Are you ready to build a bridge then? I wouldn't go that far. You, you don't want to go over a bridge that I built, trust me. <laughs> so, I was in, so I was in Washington last week, and we met with uh, some folk. That, well, we actually met with the White House on, on infrastructure, but Every time I'm with my my colleagues from Ramsey and Hennepin counties up in Minnesota, I learn more about uh, infrastructure. I especially learn more about bridges because that's where they lost mm -hmm. the I-35 right. bridge right. Uh, up in oh, up in yeah. Hennepin County, up in Minnesota. And so every time I'm with them in Washington, they bring up having lost the bridge, had the bridge that, that collapsed up there. Yeah. And I I learn more about bridges every time I'm with them. Mm -hmm. um, and and so we talk, and we actually spoke to. Uh, DJ Gribben, uh, who's the special assistant to the president on uh, infrastructure, and we actually talked to him about that bridge and talked to him mm -hmm. about the need for uh, more, you know, for infrastructure. And so we, it was interesting. We we arranged for a meeting with the special assistant to the president on infrastructure, and but we went around the um, White House. Uh, um, intergovernmental affairs team to, to make it happen, and the White House <laughs> intergovernmental affairs team came into the meeting while we were meeting with the guy, and then cut the meeting short on us. So mm -hmm. it was it was kind of interesting how that all worked, <laughs> but it was uh, it was a good meeting nonetheless. And uh, so we were there on um, Thursday. We also met with the VA, and we met with uh, um, transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had several hill visits to talk about uh, SALT, the uh, state and local uh, tax deduction. Uh, we made a bunch of media calls, and it was good. It was a good trip to Washington last week, so it was good. Well, I think it just underscores, though, and I don't want to belabor this, but it just underscores how you know we focus on. 
the obvious things like you know police and fire and though we know the impact of their service but the infrastructure, the infrastructure part is, is something that we don't think about mm -hmm. until it's a problem or a disaster or something and it's almost a good thing that there's not and that we don't think about it because yeah. you know you just know that it's being taken care of and, and uh, I'm sure that's the folks in Washington I'm sure that's how they feel as well yeah. so it's really important thank you you're, you're welcome thank thanks. you thanks guys thank and you. one other point um, thanks so much I wanted to just um, uh, have is Jack in the room if Jack, you could stand up. Jack's going to be uh, shadowing me for the day here at ah, uh, Franklin County. And so welcome. if you don't mind, give him a round of applause for uh, joining us today. Where's Jack? Where's Jack from? And he's Gary's son. Uh, he, he is, um, uh, I don't know. You want to say Gary something? Oak? You want to say something? Gary? Yeah. This is part of my government project because I wanted to learn how government works at the county level. Where's, Gary, where's Jack from? Where's I know he's Gary's son, but we're... We'll tell you. Oh, Great. Junior, we're like, nice. Wonderful. Excellent. Welcome. Glad to Thanks have you. Thanks for being here. That's Much awesome. better looking than your old man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Look, hair. He knows that. He knows it's that. The it's hair. the hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> My kids are a whole lot better. It's really good when you marry up, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the sheriff, speaking of police and fire. Resolution number 689-17, resolution authorizing a contract with MAPSIS Incorporated for the purpose of providing document imaging foundations <laughs> to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office Concealed Carry Division in the amount of $21,000. Morning Commissioners, Dave Masterson, Director of Administrative Services for Sheriff Baldwin. Uh, this resolution approves a contract with MAPSIS to provide a software license that will allow us to electronically scan, file, and index concealed carry applications and permits. Pending any questions, ask approval of this resolution. Move for approval of 689.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 689-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 690-17, resolution authorizing a one-year agreement with Carterian Pictures USA Incorporated for the non-exclusive rights to provide viewing access of motion picture DVDs for inmates in the Franklin County Correctional Center in the amount of $4,160. Commissioners, I would like to ask that this resolution be tabled while we work through a slight change in uh, contract language that will help reduce the cost of the service. We believe we'll have that worked out in the next week or so, and, and we'll be able to present it and move forward from there. So how long would you suggest we table it? Uh, realistically, we may be able to get it uh, submitted this Friday. Two, two to three weeks at most is what I think we'll need. So indefinitely, indefinitely if we can do that, I guess that would be the... Well, I will move to table... 690.17 indefinitely. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 690-17 has been tabled indefinitely. And then when it's ready, just bring okay. it back. Thank you. Thank you. Job and Family Services. Resolution number 691-17, resolution approving and certifying the Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services Prevention, Retention, and Contingency Plan for the 2018-2019 biennial period. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, the PRC plan, as you know, pre Prevention, Retention, and Contingency uses temporary assistance for needy family funds to provide short-term crisis-oriented benefits in services to our low-income families moving out of poverty and achieving self-sufficiency. As you know, Ohio law requires that counties adopt and amend their plans on at least a biannual basis. Our latest plan has been reviewed by the Local Family Services Planning Committee, appointed by the Board of Commissioners, and also must be verified by you, the Board of Commissioners. and must be certified by you, the Board of Commissioners, before we, must, before we submit this to the state. Because it's such an important plan and the changes that we've made, I would ask just for your time and patience, because I kind of really want to go through this for the people that are watching um, through the channel so they'll understand the plan. 
In addition, meeting all the statutory requirements, our agency has hosted a pair of community forums. If you remember, we hosted those community forums back in May and June to solicit input from stakeholders in the community that also assist our most vulnerable. This was the first time Franklin County Job and Family Services hosted a community input forum for PRC so that we can gather more input to ensure that our plan was going to be effective to the most vulnerable. We wanted to see how to improve PRC to improve to be more effective, meet one of the greatest challenges of our community is facing, and many of those challenges um, are, 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 you know, are homelessness, single mothers, especially black single mothers, are particularly vulnerable. Ninety-five percent of the families that the Community Shelter Board served through its emergency shelter this past year were headed by women, and seventy percent were African American women. With so many families living paycheck to paycheck throughout our, co our community, we know it might take, excuse me, we know it might take as one, it may take a bad turn to live for a person's life. That doesn't mean just losing their job. Nearly 30% of families reported by the Community Shelter Board had at least one adult in the household working at the time of entry. It could be a car breaking down or a disaster like a flood or a house or a fire. We've attempted to address many of these crises through our plan. And while we cannot turn all the stakeholders' input into policy, I am very proud of what our team ha has accomplished. I believe these changes will make, a PR will make PRC more accessible and effective resource for our most vulnerable in our Franklin County community. I'd like to walk through just a few of the changes. Under Housing and Shelter Services, We've expanded access for individuals and families experiencing housing instability, including those who are in a doubling up situation. As you may know, the doubling up term is a term that is acknowledged by HUD. It often occurs when family loses their home to an eviction or a foreclosure, which we know that Franklin County families experience 18,000 evictions a year, which often carry stigmas. Under the new plan, someone in a doubling up situation can set up their own eligibility group. So currently, if you are doubling up with a family, we take all income into accountability. With this new plan, we're going to separate and only take the family that is in the doubling up situation and put them in their own eligibility group, which will allow them to self-declare as its own individual um, eligibility group. This will ease the burden on host families and allow doubling up families to access one-time assistance as well as supportive services such as financial literacy classes to get back on their feet into their own home. We also are proposing to change the benefit caps and eligibility limits. As you know, there are several different benefit categories for PRC, rental assistance, home repair, work boots purchases, auto repairs. Under the previous plan, families could only apply for benefits under assistance category, each with its own monetary limits on single application. On top of that, the same family could not apply for assistance under the same category in consecutive years, meaning if you applied for housing in 2016, you cannot apply for housing in 2017. You would have to apply for a different entity in 2017. Under the revised plan, Families now can apply for multiple categories in the same application, and the individual caps have been lifted in favor of a $1,500 cap across all categories. This really will assist with our families that are living in homeless shelters or doubling up. So now, whereas we had caps on utilities, caps on housing, which I think the housing was $1,000, utilities was $500. We are now saying there's a 1500 cap across the board. You can apply for multiple entities that apply to the PRC plan, your housing, your utilities, and even if you have a $200 car, $200 car repair, you can throw that in there to, 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 to get to your $1,500. Under the revised plan, families can now apply for multiple categories in the same application. This, this has been lifted in favor of $1,500 across all categories. Again, this does not mean all applications will meet the $1,500 threshold, and applicants cannot access the balance of any financial assistance they receive, meaning if you, if you um, submit an application, your one application per year for $900, that is, your, that, is what, that is your cap. You can't come back and ask for the additional $600. Transportation services, we know that reliable transportation is critical to maintaining employment and self-sufficiency. 
We also know that a lack of reliable transportation is one of the greatest barriers to obtaining employment. The new plan extends eligibility for assistance with auto repairs for maintenance to individuals with job offers, not just those who are currently employed. If you can provide a credible letter or verification from your employer that you have a job, we, this PRC plan will assist you in getting your, in getting your car repaired. The plan also creates a new one-time benefit category to help pay driver's license reinstatement. We know in our reentry population, many times those individuals have challenges getting licensed, obtaining licenses. So under this new plan, we are going to cover license reinstatement fees. It also provides individuals with access to bus passes to support their employment for job search or participation in workforce training or education for up to four months. Many times individuals, when they obtain a job, the, um, we, we provide bus passes for a month. We're extending that for four months because we know if you have a job, you're going to be playing catch up with your first few paychecks. PRC is not an entitlement, and in addition to meeting eligibility guidelines, families who apply for one-time or short-term sh shelter assistance must also provide a 30-day sustainability, sustainability budget. So we know in order to apply for PRC, you may be eligible, but also you have to show that you are sustainable, meaning how are you going to sustain your living going forward? This ensures we can spread out our limited PRC dollars to have the greatest impact and make families who face deep-rooted barriers are connected with longer-term supportive services such as food assistance and work experiences programs to begin their journey toward self-sufficiency. We believe the PRC plan will allow us to better support families living on the edge of homelessness while remaining diligent stewards of our taxpayer dollars. And if I could, I just wanted just to give some data. 95% of the 1,098 families served in the shelter had a female head of household. 49% of families served were newly homeless. 20% of families had at least one adult working at the time of entry. 17% were opportunity youth ages 18 to 24 and were designated as head, head of household. And lastly, commissioners, to complement this plan, we will be coming back to you to with a resolution. We will be working with the eviction court. We are going to put a PRC case manager in the eviction court Monday through Friday from 8 to noon. We will, get, we will let you know when that date is. And that is to assist our families when they go before the judge and they may ask, did you apply for any services? The individual may not even know this benefit is, is they're eligible. So we'll have someone in the court that can apply, that can assist them in applying for PRC right on the spot, also to check the verification of those who have applied. Pending any questions, we would ask for your approval of this resolution. Joy, I want to thank you. I know we've struggled over time to make sure that we were meeting needs in the community. And I think this plan, with the community input you got, is, is going in exactly the direction we need to go. And I also know it's not the panacea that everybody wants it to be. And we've had those conversations yes. before that there are organizational leaders that have thought PRC was supposed to be something that it never was supposed to be. Right. And your comment that it's not an entitlement program is right on spot. It's it's a patch. Yes. To get somebody through a very rough spot. Yes. And it's not the end all. And this is this is a great thank you great improvement. Thank you to so meet much. Current needs. Thank you. We understand that it's not a cure. It's we've tried to com we've tried to communicate that that as much as possible. There are limited funds that goes into the plan. I know. It is not an allocation so much as a designation. Where we look at our budget every year to see how many dollars we can put into this plan. And some counties don't even have a PRC <coughs> plan. I, I just to build on what Commissioner Brown was saying. I mean, one, I can appreciate that you know when there's a leak in the boat there's something there to stop the immediate leak and get you to the other side of the water um, and I really appreciate that you talked about um, sustainability mm -hmm. and even though that's not a part of the the broad part of the plan they talked about the whole idea is um, undergirded by uh, sustainability because we, we really have to figure out you know it's not so much about 
you know, plugging the leak when it's there, right. but it's ensuring that, that you can go on without the support Absolutely. eventually and yeah. that you can be sustainable for your family and for yourself. And, uh, and to me, that's the most important part of, of this entire conversation. How do we get people right. out of that current circumstance so they can be self-sufficient? And, and I, I feel like, you know, that's embedded in this, even though it's not part of the uh, the name of the plan. So thank it you. It is well. a part of the eligibility commissioner so that in order for you to apply, um, you may meet the TANF guideline mm -hmm. for PRC, but if you cannot show sustainability, we cannot approve the dollars because we want to make sure to complement the work that you do and also all of you do, but also to be good stewards of our taxpayer dollars. Sure. All right. Well, too often we, we are, you know, we're tasked with helping folks find employment or, you know, and, and then there's a barrier to that. And, and this, you know, there's, there's, there's just there, there's there's dollars here to be able to, to to assist. There's there's just you know it's it's a great it's a great plan. It's a great uh, assist and 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 it's it's you know this is this is our ability to be able to um, help folks you know uh, go that extra step to get uh, out of the situation that they're in. And so uh, it's a it's a great it's a great opportunity. So thank you. Thanks for the work. Thank you. I've been told this is kind of an aggressive plan, so I appreciate your support in supporting this plan. So thank you. I will move for approval of 69117. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 691-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Child Support Enforcement? Resolution number 692-17. Resolution authorizing a contract between the Franklin County Child Support Service Enforcement Agency and Lexus Nexus Risk Solutions Incorporated to assist in CSEA in location and research in the amount of sixty thousand dollars. Commissioners Lori Torriero, Assistant Director for the Franklin County Child Support Enforcement Agency. Um, this resolution is a uh, contract that is kind of supplemental to the law library's contract with LexisNexis for legal research. Um, this contract is uh, allows us to use a product that LexisNexis uh, created called Accurant. It accesses many different types of databases and helps us um, in location of custodial and non-custodial parents and also research that we do uh, to determine ability to pay child support. Um, and we because it is because the law library has kind of the main contract we got some very good pricing it's a multi-year contract so our pricing is locked in I would like to thank Harold Anderson for helping us um, negotiate uh, some of the some of the legal details to to make it all come together um, and pending any questions we'd request your approval I'll move for approval of 692.17 and thank you and thanks Harold Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 692-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Economic Development Appointment. Resolution number 693-17. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the test discharge of mortgage for Tara Stewart at 800 West Car Lane, Galloway, Ohio, 43119. Good morning, Commissioners. Jenny Snap, Assistant Director, Economic Development and Planning. I'm joined today by Jamie Edwards, who is our Business Services Officer, Economic Development and Planning. And she has a number of resolutions to take you through this morning. The good ones. The good ones. Good morning. <laughs> Commissioners, Tara Stewart received $6,000 in July of 2015. The obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move for approval of 693.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 693-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 694-17. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the test discharge of mortgage instrument for Sierra Lindsley. Lindsay at 720 Cedar Run Drive, Black Lake, Ohio, 43004. Sierra Lindsay received $6,000 in October of 2013. 
All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move approval of 694-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 694-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 695-17, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Christopher and Mary O'Neill at 5 547 Daventry Lane, <coughs> Ohio, 43230. Christopher and Mary O'Neill <coughs> received $5,630 in March of 2009. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move for approval of 695-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 695-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 696-17. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Sarah Dorsey at 7465 Oliver Winchester Drive, Canal Winchester, Ohio, 43110. Sarah Dorsey received $3,270.48 in January of 2003. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move approval of 696-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 696-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 697-17. Resolution authorizing the board of Franklin, Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Richard and Athena Wasmus at 808 Cherrydale Drive, Columbus, Ohio, 43207. Richard and Athena Wasmus received $15,000 in 2005. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move approval of 697-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 697-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 698-17, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Glenn Hawkins at 1083 Maple Street, Harrisburg, Ohio, 43216. Glenn Hawkins received $5,825 in November of 2011. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move approval of 698-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 698-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 699-17. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Robert and Rebecca Arnett at 510 Ainsbury Drive, Gehenna, Ohio, 43230. Robert and Rebecca Arnett received $12,250 in May of 1998. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move approval of 699-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 699-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 700-17, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attest discharge of mortgage instrument for Robert and Rebecca Arnett at 510 Ainsbury Drive, Gehenna, Ohio, Gehenna, Ohio 43230. Robert and Rebecca Arnett received the second housing grant in the amount of $7,750 in May of 1998. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move for passage of 717. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 700-17 has been adopted. 
Resolution number 701-17, Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Lawrence Clare Jr. at 2076 Agler Road, Columbus, Ohio, 43224. Lawrence Clare received $6,447 in August of 2013. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move for passage of 701-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 701-17 has been adopted. <coughs> Resolution number 702-17. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Joyce Zimmerman at 8607 Edgewater Avenue, Galloway, Ohio, 43119. Joyce Zimmerman received $15,000 in November of 1996. All obligations of the housing program have been fulfilled and the mortgage should be discharged. The taxes are paid in current. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Move for passage of 702-17. Second. Food and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 702-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 703-17, review of petition to annex 55 acres from Blendon Township to the City of Columbus, case number ANX-14-17. This resolution is to consider an expedited Type 2 annexation petition of 55 acres from Blendon Township to the City of Columbus. The area to be annexed includes property located at 0 Alry Road, that's both east and west of Alry, south of Central College, and north of 161. The petition was filed by agent and attorney Laura McGregor Comack of Comack Law on behalf of the property owner, owner McCorkle Soaring Eagles, LLC. 56.7% of the site's perimeter is contiguous with the City of Columbus, and the City passed Ordinance Number 2343-2017 on September 11, 2017, indicating the services that will be provided once the annexation is approved in a statement regarding incompatible land uses. The petition meets all statutory requirements outlined in Section 709.021 of the Ohio Revised Code, and pending any questions, we request your approval. I will move for approval of 703-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. <coughs> Resolution number 703-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 704-17, review a petition to annex 0.7 acres from Perry Township to the City of Columbus, case number ANX-15-17. This resolution is to consider an expedited Type 2 annexation petition of 0 0.7 acres from Perry Township to the City of Columbus. The area to be annexed includes property located at 1831 West Case Road, that's south of West Case, west of Go Down, north of Bethel, and east of Sawmill. Petition was filed by owners and agents Nicholas and Rachel Brown, and Mr. Brown is in attendance if you have any questions. 50% of the site's perimeter is contiguous with the City of Columbus, and the City passed Ordinance Number 2344-2017 on September 11, 2017, indicating the services that will be provided once the annexation is approved in a statement regarding incompatible land uses. Petition meets all statutory requirements of Section 709.021 of the Ohio Revised Code. And pending any questions, we request your approval. I'll move for passage of 704.17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 704-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Homeland Security and Justice Programs. Resolution number 705-17, resolution authorizing acceptance of a scholarship from Unite Unifying Solutions to, to support employee training. Good morning, Commissioners. Michael Daniels from the Office of Justice Policy and Programs. Um, our staff continue to uh, um, it's keep with what our county administrator has told us, keep doing good work and don't spend any general fund money. Um, and so to that end, um, <laughs> To, to that end, Dr. Palmer has received a, uh, a scholarship to take some course training here in Columbus, uh, specifically regarding how to deal with social and personal trauma. Pending any questions, we'd ask your approval. 
Move for approval of 705-17. Second. Moved in second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 705-17 has been adopted. <coughs> resolution number 706-17 to rescind resolution 644-17 authorizing a professional services contract with Courtney Benner for provision of reentry data collection and administrative services through through the FY 2015 JMAC grant program. Commissioner, the next two resolutions are companion resolutions. The first one we're asking to rescind resolution 644-17, which we brought here in September. Uh, upon looking at the scope of work document as it was written uh, and reviewed by the auditor's office, we wanted to make sure that there was absolutely no possible confusion about whether this was an independent contractor's agreement or whether this was uh, an employment agreement under the IRS rules. The first set of language was somewhat ambiguous, so we decided to tighten it up. Uh, and so in order to implement that new language, the first thing we need to do is to rescind the old contract. I will move for passage of 70617. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 706-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 707-17, resolution authorizing a professional services contract with Courtney Benner for provision of reentry data collection and analysis through the FY 2015 JMAC grant program in the amount of $10,000. And Commissioner, this is the contract with the revised language which has been signed off by both prosecutor's office and the auditor's office. And again, not general funds. And again, not general funds. <laughs> J JMHC dollars. So yes. you're doing more good work without general funds. Yes, ma'am. Move for passage of 707-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 707-17 has been adopted. Resolution number 708-17, resolution authorizing acceptance of an invitation to a convene, convening sponsored by the National Resource Center on Justice involved women in, Amer in the American Jail Association in the amount of $100 and keeping in the vein of spending no general fund dollars. Um, Melissa Pearson, the deputy director downstairs, has been invited to attend uh, a national convening on meeting the needs of women in jails to reduce their involvement in the criminal justice system, specifically dealing with mental illness, co-occurring substance use disorder, and implementation of gender responsive practices. Um, the uh, National uh, Jail Association, as well as the American Jail Association, as well as the National Resource Center on Justice Involved Women, has invited Melissa to come out and participate, and they are covering um, all of her costs. The $100 purchase order is not anticipated to be used, but it's there in case of incidentals. Move for passage of 708-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 708-17 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Human Resources. Resolution number 709-17, Resolution Approving Personnel Actions. Good morning, Commissioner Sue Hamilton from the Department of Human Resources. For your consideration today, one new hire as a personnel action. Pending any questions, we request your approval. Move for passage of 709-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 709-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Sue. Purchasing Department. Resolution number 710-17. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $1,633,120.50. Good morning, Commissioner. <coughs> Excuse me. Carl Cusper representing the Purchasing Department. The resolution before you requests your approval of 131 purchase orders. These purchase orders have been pre-certified availability funds by the county auditor. If any, any questions, I recommend their approval. Move for approval of 710-17. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 710-17 has been adopted. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 711-17, resolution supporting the rights of Ohio residents to collectively bargain and opposing any and all right to work legislation to come, to come before the Ohio General Assembly that weakens collective bargaining laws and rights in the state of Ohio. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Chris Long, Deputy Administrator. Since 1983, Ohio's collective bargaining laws pertaining to public sector unions have provided a framework for ensuring the effective use of taxpayer dollars through local decision making. Franklin County Board of Commissioners has, a long, has long been a strong supporter and proponent of these laws and the rights of Ohio's public employees to organize and bargain as collective units and has both informally and formally expressed this position on many occasions, including during the Senate Bill 5 debate back in 2011. The Franklin County Board of Commissioners recognizes the high quality public services that county employees render daily to residents and taxpayers and believes that preserving their right to negotiate benefits, equipment, and other issues is paramount to protecting both their welfare and that of the public they serve. There appears to be a renewed effort at the state uh, legislature to um, take another look at these uh, quote unquote so-called right to work uh, uh, pieces of legislation and legislation that has been introduced this year includes such things as removing requirements that public employees join or pay dues to any employee organization, prohibiting public employers from requiring public unions to join or pay dues to an employee organization, and prohibiting employee organizations from being required to represent public employees who are not members. These provisions are designed to weaken unions and the public employees they represent. While these and other similar proposals are often uh, referred to as quote unquote right to work legislation, these measures do not protect the rights of workers or do anything to guarantee anyone a job or to protect individuals who have a job from losing it. Rather, they have been shown to lower wages and benefits for those same workers whose rights they claim to protect. This resolution uh, would declare its strong opposition to any effort by the Ohio General Assembly to pass legislation that attempts to weaken organized labor in the state of Ohio and its strong support for public sector employees that strengthen our communities in our state and would also uh, uh, request and direct the clerk to provide a certified copy of this res resolution to the Ohio uh, General Assembly leadership in both the House and Senate and the Franklin County Legislative Delegation. Pending any questions, we'd request your uh, approval of this resolution. I think it's important to note that um, it is the right to collectively bargain that builds the middle class in all of our communities and anything we do to weaken those rights is taking steps backward and and I'm really happy that this board supports all rights to collectively bargain because in this day and age we've got to do everything we can to protect workers rights I would just say that I, I agree completely with that in that it should be noted that many of the standards that we enjoy as workers no matter what job you hold are a result of labor mm -hmm. leadership and labor agreements from the eight-hour workday to the 40-hour work day week. You know, yeah. all of those things are rooted in uh, labor, organized labor contracts and negotiations and representing worker rights and so forth. And so, so in many ways, whether you're a part of a yeah. labor union or not, or not. you're benefiting right. from the work that they represent, representing yeah. worker rights. And so, I just can't think of a more fitting resolution. 100% supportive, and yeah. uh, and and hope that uh, our public uh, recognizes uh, our support and why for uh, this resolution. I uh, wholeheartedly agree with my colleagues. Thank you for the hard work of this, yeah. uh, to put this together. And uh, thanks to uh, our friends in, in labor, and thanks to the folks in the room that, uh, for all you guys do as well. I'm happy to move for passage of 71117. Second. Moved and second in voting, Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 711-17 has been adopted. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioners. Is that it? Antoine, do we have any journalization? We have one. Okay. Uh, the Franklin County Board of Commissioners have received a proposal from the Franklin County Recorder's Office for funding the Recorder's Technology Fund. Board of Commissioners will hold an administrative session mandated by Section 317.321D of the of the Ohio Revised Code to discuss the proposal on Thursday, October 19, 2017, immediately following briefing um, session in the briefing room. Okay. Right. All right. Um, we. Uh, oh, I apologize. Um, uh, on the last resolution, uh, Mr. Rob, would you like to uh, say a few words? Sure. I apologize. Uh, Rob Dorns uh, would uh, was here to um, 
speak on the last resolution. I didn't give him an opportunity. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, my name is Rob Dorns, the legal counsel for Act Ohio and the House State Building Construction Trades Council. Here this morning with my colleagues, uh, brothers in labor, Dorsey Hager of the Central Ohio Building Construction Trades and Bill Hewitt, who's the uh, business manager, our field rep for Bricklayers Local 55. Don't really have much to say. I think the commissioners and deputy county administrator Long uh, took all the, the, the great comments and appreciate those comments um, ab about how organized labor makes up the backbone of the middle class. One thing I did want to mention to, to enhance sort of the comments that you made all this morning is there's a reason that it's, it's helpful for allies like yourself to stand up at this, this moment. Uh, over the past year and a half, you've had uh, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, and West Virginia all adopt right to work laws, all states surrounding Ohio. Uh, additionally, in the past week and a half, we've seen the U.S. Supreme Court uh, accept cert for a case that is mm -hmm. uh, un unfortunately likely to have ramifications for the collective bargaining uh, rights of public employees, not only in Ohio, but across the nation. So having, a, having allies like yourself that recognize what organized labor does to the middle class, what it's done to ensure workers' ability to earn a fair living, to ensure that they get to go to a, a safe workplace on an everyday basis, uh, we can't thank you enough for doing so in times like these in which, unfortunately, we have too many folks on the other side of this issue that only see this as pushing workers aside to, to make more and more of a profit or to push workers away. Uh, and we just want to say thank you for, for taking the stance this morning. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right. Uh, that concludes our business uh, for October 3rd, 2017. We will see everybody next week. Thank you.